Hi, I'm Adrienne Gaskell, and today I'm going to show you how to master the bead spinner. But before we start, I think it would be very helpful for you to go to my website, kumihimoresource.com, and print out this paper to use to follow along with the video. It's also a great reference for later after you have watched the video, so, you know, kind of act as a little refresher. My website is thekumihimoresource.com or adriangaskell.com. Both of them take you to the same place and then go to the Kumihimo page. On the Kumihimo page, this, B, this PDF is available for download. It's a great little info, info sheet. Now, the bead spinner is an essential tool for making beaded braids. It's especially important when loading the long bead strands for continuous beaded braids. Now, the thing is about a bead spinner is they come in different shapes and sizes. This one is from Beadalon. There is one from uh, Beadsmith as well that's almost the same, and they have the same size bowl. This bowl size is really important because if you get one that has too large a bowl, you need more beads. You know, for a beaded braid, you probably don't usually need more than 20, 30 grams of beads, but if you have to buy 30 or 40 grams to make the spinner work, then you're buying beads you don't need just to make the spinner work. So I think most people, when they have trouble using a spinner, it's because they don't have enough beads in it. The bowl needs to be about half full because it works on centrifugal force. Now the ones that you see that are larger and they have really pretty wood, they're really nice uh, looking, but they're really not worth the price in my opinion. And some of them have a very large rod on them, a tall rod. And what happens with those is when you take the bead spinner and you go to dump out your beads, you notice the little rod, you can dump them out easily. But if you have a tall rod, it's almost like this before you can get it over and you have to turn it. It just makes a mess for me. I don't like the bigger bowls for many reasons. Now, the other thing is that some people talk about using a battery operated spinner. I prefer the manual spinner. I feel that I have more control over this spinner. But also the other thing is with the battery operated spinner, depending on the age of the batteries that are in there, they work either very slow or very fast. And also some of them have a really irritating noise. So that's why I don't really like them is because of the noise level more than anything else. Okay, now let's talk about needles. I feel the needles are as important as the spinner itself. So I like two different needles. I find there's not one that works for all beads. There's the beadsmith needle, which is a long rigid needle, good for very large beads like 8-0s and 6-0s. And when I say large beads, I mean beads with large holes. And then there's the big eye needle by Beadalon. Now, this one comes in a package of five, and the Beetle on Big Eye Needle is in a package of two. And let me show you the basic difference between these besides the length. The, this needle is fairly rigid. I don't know if you can tell that, but it is fatter than the uh, Big Eye Needle. It has a little tiny hole on the end, so it does need to have a leader thread in it. The Beetle on Needle has a big eye, which sometimes I have difficulty opening. There you go. And so you can either thread your warp thread right through this eye or use a leader thread. I generally use a leader thread because I just like to have that so that I can get the little beads on. This will work with size 15 beads and 11 -0 beads really great. I even use it for like the Toho Megatama beads. Now a leader thread can be made simply out of using beading thread, even sewing thread. What I do is I save my ends to my kumihimo silk because I find that's a little thinner. And then I can take one of those and use that for my leader. So let me just show you. I have a really good diagram on the PDF uh, info there, but let me just show you how it works. So I open up the, lead, the big eye needle I put the thread through here. Uh, this thread's what, about 10 inches long? You don't want it too short. You can always cut it shorter later. And then I'm just doing a simple overhand knot here. And I 
probably am making it look a lot harder than it is because it's getting caught on my fingernail right now. There we go. Goes right through overhand knot. There we go. So we got an overhand knot. I make it nice and tight. You notice my tail on here is very long because it was easier for me. Here's my knot. Here's my tail. It was easier for me to tie it that way. So now I'm just going to cut off my tail so it's not so long. And then as it shows <clears throat> in my picture there, I want to have my knot on the side because that way it's less bulky at the bottom where the beads are spinning on. So now how to use the bead spinner. We're going to change camera angles here so that we can get a good look at the bowl of the spinner. So I'll be right back. So now we're ready to start spinning beads. You notice I have my Mara die to the right of me. That's because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, it'll be better for you to have it on the left. And I'm going to bring all my cords up onto my work surface. When you look at the information sheet, there's a helpful hint down here at the bottom. It should probably be at the top, but it says to keep the majority of the warp cord on top of your work surface while spinning. If it's hanging lower than the spinner, as the beads spin, gravity may pull the warp out of the needle or leader. The beads will then go all over the floor. That's not what we want. So keep them up here so we don't have to fight gravity. Now I'm going to take and put beads in the spinner. This is a, a large tube of beads. It's about 35 grams. So I don't need quite all of that. Um, I want to get my spinner bowl to be just doing that so you can see. It's probably about a third full. That should be enough, third to a half. And then I'm going to take my need, one of my threads, one of my warp cords actually, and put it through the leader thread of my needle. I'm going to, you know, have about 10 or 12 inches there so that it's doubled and the beads won't come off. Now I'm going to hold my needle with my dominant hand. So I'm right-handed, I'm holding the needle with my right hand. And this way I can spin the spinner with my non-dominant hand. Now the way you spin is with this rod. Don't use the bowl to spin because that way you don't have as much control. You'll need to spin fast enough for those beads to go up the side. You see how they've come off the bottom of the spinner and they're going up the side of the bowl? That's what actually makes the beads go onto the needle. Some of the beads may fly out of the bowl while you're doing this. If that really bothers you, you can put this in some kind of tray. I find the bead mat is sufficient for me. I can pick up a few beads later. The, when I'm holding the needle, I'm holding it at a slight angle. This is angling down a little bit, but it's almost horizontal. The tip is going to face the outside of the bowl. Now I can have the needle either on the side of the bowl from closest to me, or I can put it over here away from me. If you find that that's a way to see it easier and you can hold it better that side, it doesn't matter. It's just that if you have it facing you, you're going to spin the bowl in the clockwise direction. And if you put it over here, you're going to spin the bowl counterclockwise. But when I put the needle inside the bowl, I don't want it to touch the bowl. It's just really going to sit um, on the surface of the beads. And I need to hold this very firmly. I've got a really tight grip on it because I don't want it moving like that while I'm spinning. I don't want this to be flipping around. So I've got a very tight grip. It's pointed down and now I spin. There are a few went flying out. Okay, so now when you see that they quit going on, you can stop and turn it upward so that they don't fall off. And then I grab the tip of the needle so I don't lose them and just slide these down. These are size 11 O beads. You see how easy they go down? And what I do is I keep some beads up here so that it holds the thread doubled and I don't worry about 
the thread, uh, the uh, warp cord coming out of the leader thread. All right, so I'm going to do some more. There might be sometimes you get a bead that doesn't that doesn't have a really big hole, and it'll get caught on the end of the needle. So if you ever see that your beads quit loading, then you can move this stuff and check out the end of the needle. I could probably use a little bit more beads here. And then let me do this from the other direction so you can see how that looks. Maybe you'll get a better view of it over here. They're flying, they're flying. Okay. But you can see it can make short work with the spinner. As soon as they quit going on, you just flip it up. I'm doing this kind of slowly for your benefit here. Generally, it takes me less than 30 minutes to spin beads for a necklace. Okay. Now that I have all the beads on, I've got about 20 inches of beads. Now I'm gonna tie my leader thread. This will keep them from coming off. Actually, I'm gonna use this one for a continuous beaded braid. So before I tie my leader thread, I'm gonna just show you how I do the stop bead. Stop bead on there. Then I tie my leader thread. If you're not doing a continuous beaded braid, you don't need that stop bead. And then you pull that down to the end. And that one's done, so now that one can just hang. Now let me show you another uh, little trick here. These are something brand new that I invented with Beadalon. And they're called uh, bead spinner inserts. And the advantage of having the bead spinner insert is that you can use less beads. Let me show you what I mean. This little tube here holds about eight and a half grams of beads. Remember the other one for the bowl, we had to have 30 something grams for it to really work well, close to 30. Now for this one, I'm going to show you what happens with eight grams. Eight grams is pretty small. I probably would normally want to do about 10 to 12, but you can see I'm doing pretty good with just this small amount of beads. So the deal is with this insert tray, what it does is it decreases the size of the bowl so you don't need so many beads. The other thing is if you're using more than one color, you can simply remove that one and now you can fill this one with a different color. So sometimes I do a braid that's 50-50 mix and I could just go back and forth. So I want half the beads green and the next half red. I guess this is going to be a Christmas necklace, right? And there we go. I think they're leaking out of the view of the camera, so it's a little harder for me to spin today. <laughs> Usually it's much faster. Let me do this side so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put a little bit more of these in here. About 10 to 12 grams, I find, is enough. There we go. Turn it up, slide it down. So now if I want to put some more green on, I'll just bring this back over here and do green. Very cool, huh? So now you know how to use a 
beat spinner. And it's just gonna take practice, practice, practice to get very fast.